Hey everyone, James back. Hope you guys are all having a great week. And after a one week hiatus, the Cherry 3D printer is back on my desk. Uh, it's been a busy week and unfortunately I haven't gotten as much done as I was hoping to. So this is going to be a bit of a short video to let you know where things are at, where we're going and what to expect in the future. So the first thing I did this week was try and get the calibration in a little bit more. I was noticing that some of the dimensions of my stuff wasn't turning out 100% perfect, so I went and grabbed a calibration cube off of Thingiverse. Now, this is a pretty simple cube. It's just 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. But luckily, the one on Thingiverse has been conveniently marked with your X, your Y, and your Z axis so that once it's finished printing and you go to measure it, you know which axis was responsible for which measurement. So if we take this on the X axis and we measure across, you can see we're floating between 19.7 and 19.8, so we're off by 0.3 millimeters. If we go to the Y, it's a similar story, 19.6, 19.7, somewhere in there. And if we go to the Z axis, measuring from top to bottom, we can see that we're off by 19.6. So the dimensions weren't perfect. So much like we calculated before, we take the existing steps per millimeter in our firmware, divide it by what we got, and then multiply it by what we want. So if it was 200, you divide 200 by 19.7, then multiply it by 20, and that gives us our new calculation. Fire that into either the firmware or using the M92 command, and you should be in business. Once that calibration was changed, I went ahead and printed a second one. And as you can see on the x-axis, we have 20 millimeters. On the y-axis, uh, 20, 20.1, close enough. And on the z-axis, we have 19.9. .9. Now, I did allow for a little bit of room for error on the z-axis because all these parts have what's often called elephant's foot. So when you're printing, especially in a, on an unheated bed, it's very important to make sure that your first layer sticks to the bed very well. The way this is usually accomplished by having the first layer print a little bit closer to the bed than it should, and it kind of smudges out. So your first layer, instead of being 0.2 millimeters thick, may be 0.15 millimeters thick. And as a result, it does this off the bottom, which gives you the effect that kind of looks like an elephant foot. So you end up losing a little bit of vertical height, but your part doesn't come off the bed. And if you print on a raft or something like that, this doesn't even become an issue. So with my calibration dialed in and my parts coming out dimensionally accurate, I went ahead and printed a shroud for the heatsink. Now this shroud divides the airflow from my 40 millimeter fan between the heatsink and the actual part. And it works okay. Um, the parts are definitely coming out cleaner. I printed a pretty successful benchy off of this design. I think eventually I will move into a two fan setup, but this was the easiest way to get things clean and up and running and didn't require me running additional power to anything. So it works pretty well. And since all we're printing is PLA, the act of cooling all the time isn't really an issue. If you're printing off something with that does ABS, then you wanna have the option to be able to turn off that cooling whenever possible. So with all that in check and the new cooler installed, it was time to start printing parts for the Cherry Printer from the Cherry Printer. The goal of this project all along has been to configure and build a Cherry 3D printer that has the ability to print copies of itself. The part it's printing right now is my modified Z slash X carriage, which adds strain relief to the bearing. So basically, I've essentially cut a slit down the side so that when you install the bearing, it has some flex. This was the first print attempt and it highlighted some other issues that existed on the printer. Some we can work on and some we have to accept. All of this is exhibited by a lack of circular hole on this part. The part just isn't as circular as it should be. Now part of this is the motor's fault. The motors have a bit of backlash. They're not as clean moving as a NEMA 17 motor. So we will have to accept that the circles aren't going to be perfect, but this was a little bit sloppier than they should have been. And it's because that over time, as I've been printing off of it, the belts have stretched a bit. And this is fairly common in most 3D printers. So I essentially cut my cable tie, pull as firmly as I can, and re-cable tie it. You want to make sure you don't put so much strain on the motor that it looks like the motor's starting to bend in place, but you want to make sure that it's fairly taut. And that's where we're at right now. So with that in place, I started up this print, and though I was hoping this print was actually going to be complete yesterday, but we had some power issues here, and as a result, the print that was running failed, and we're on to the second attempt. So. A little bit shorter of a video than I was hoping for, but this is going to give you guys the opportunity to ask some questions or toss some comments up about modifications you think would be a good idea for it. Uh, after this, we're going to be moving into the giveaway and the release of the modified parts. The Merlin firmware is pretty much ready to go at this point, and 
And of course I'll be releasing the modified SEL files, which give you the strain relief for both the X slash Z axis and the carriage for the hot end, mm -hmm. and the parts that I've designed, like the end stop holder for here, and the adjustment screw for the end stop for the Z axis mm -hmm. that also gives you your cable management back here. That'll all be obviously free to download on Thingiverse. Then we're moving into giveaway territory. So whoever wins the giveaway is going to have a couple of options. Number one, you're going to be able to choose the color that the parts are printed in. Whatever color you want, I'll try and track it down within the base colors. We're not going to get into fancy filament or anything like that. Um, but you're also going to have the option as to whether or not you want the parts printed off the Cherry 3D printer, as the original concept was. Although, I think printing this one part at least is going to be proof in the pudding type situation that it does have the capability of printing a copy for itself. Or alternatively, you can get the parts printed on my CR10, which will be a little more dimensionally accurate, a little bit easier to work with. Uh, the actual giveaway is going to be hosted on Gleam. I'm just waiting for a couple more parts to come in off of AliExpress. I've ordered a couple of extra parts off AliExpress that I'm going to throw in that'll hopefully make it easier for somebody to build a printer pretty much right off the bat. You'll still have to go pick up some wood and stuff like that, but I'm hoping it'll at least give you a better head start. So the giveaway is going to be hosted on Gleam, and you guys are going to have the chance to win a bunch of parts that should hopefully get you pretty close to being able to build this 3D printer. Um, the next video will also try and recap what we've succeeded with, what we haven't succeeded with, uh, what still needs to work for the future, and sort of the limitations that we need to accept so people know what they're getting into when they build this printer. So if you liked this video, toss me a thumbs up. If you're new here, subscribe and click the bell so that you're notified when I put out new content. If you have any questions or comments, toss it in the comments below. And until next time, stay creative. <laughs>